What's going on guys? This is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. We have made it back out to the rocks with our Vanquish Ford Ice truck. This is a VS410 platform and it's a little more simplified than the Vanquish Phoenix is. Transmission's a little more straightforward. There are no shifting mechanisms. It's on straight axles and it comes as an RTR. This is Vanquish's most affordable RTR, but it is still an absolute performer. On my first video, I showed it off and I had made some changes to it before I had even put it on video and it did pretty awesome. Today, we've come back out to show more of the changes I've made and talk more about the Vanquish Ford Ice. This is an awesome little truck and I am a big fan. And if you're looking for one, it, it are, it's already highly recommended. So uh, with more upgrades, I doubt it's going to get any worse. We've got our friend Sydney, the trail dog out here with us. She found a tennis ball. She's very excited, yes. Say hello, Sydney. Say hello to all of your subscribers. They're not here for me, they're here for you. Okay, time to crop up. Right on. So, what are some of the differences that I had made since the last video? I guess we should probably cover what I had changed in the last video. So, one of the biggest upgrades I had made for this truck was the steering servo before I ever put it on video. It was an RTR servo, I just, you know, I don't think it was gonna like make the review you know what i mean it wasn't going to blow my mind with its uh 200 ounce inches so i had put a reef smart 1100 in it and ran it off of the stock rtr electronics it was capable of running it it worked it did okay it wasn't at its full power but it doesn't need to be with the reefs 1100 not being at its full power still gives you like 800 plus ounce inches right so very capable servo i swapped that out that went to a different project and now we have a raw 500 in here but we also changed out the rtr electronics this guy is now sporting a hobby wing brushless system uh oh almost did it may have to take the uh, different line here with this truck that's okay that's more of a buggy line anyway i swapped out to a hobby wing axe system and let's see what 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 axe is this uh, 2100 kV, maybe 23, something like that. It's not the Fusion. It has a separate ESC. Let's give it a little bump right there. Oh, we bumped into the wall. You can't bump into the wall or else it bounces you right back off that lower ledge, but you need momentum to get up the lower ledge. There we go, we got those Vanquish. These are still the RTR tires and I was a big fan of them in the initial review. We're gonna cover uh, some thoughts on those tires here in a minute. Other changes I had made, I had put the lightweight VFD gear set in there. And that includes overdrive gearing as well. So this guy has got like 20 plus percent overdrive going into those VF10 straight axles. F10 straight axles are fantastic, very strong, great steering angle. And with the RTR controller, which we are actually using in this video, I accidentally left this home in my first video. Uh, so with this controller, you can set endpoints, and uh, I think you can put throttle curve in it, if I remember right. So got some cool features on the RTR controller. I had changed out the stock wheels for aftermarket aluminum incision bead locks from Vanquish. I guess, do you, do you say they're from Vanquish if they're incision? Incision is Vanquish's less expensive brand, but I don't know if you call it from Vanquish. You know what I mean? It's like... It's like saying you got a Mercury from Ford, I guess. It doesn't really make sense. So there we go, up and over. But Incision Roswell wheels look great with this body style, in my opinion. And uh, they're doing well. A little bit scratched up now, but that's okay. Inside those tires, we have the Vanquish 4.65 Stance Foams. These are a dual stage foam. They're a new product offering from Vanquish Products. They have two sizes, 4.65 for these RTR tires and 4.75. So I did get the 465s in here, and I've been a big fan of how they're performing so far. With those dual stage foams, they have a closed cell inner foam, meaning they're like a, a very dense, hard foam. So that helps stop side rolling, side hill rolling of your sidewall. Your tire doesn't roll when you turn on a side hill. That's what we're, that's what we're trying to convey here. But uh, I unfortunately had a little bit of a hard time to get these RTR tires to fit those foams and then clamp into the bead locks of these KMCs. Now, luckily I gave it multiple efforts and uh, over a couple days actually, I had taken the tires off of the plastic bead locks. 
or off the aluminum bead locks as well and gave them time to uh, kind of relax. So took a little bit of time to let those beads kind of go back to the size that they were supposed to be. I don't know, there's something about those plastic wheels going onto the aluminums that it did not like the dual stage in there as well. Uh, the tire was just a little stretched out more than it wanted to be. But I gave it some time and it ended up working just fine. Now they're in there, got the dual stages, RTR tires with the aluminum wheels. So uh, if you have issues with that, maybe, maybe give it a couple days, take them off wheels and tires, just let them sit on your workbench for a couple days, and then try again. But on these foams, I had taken this truck to Colorado and run it through a river for a while, and then ended up taking the wheels apart and letting them dry out. So if you ever get your dual stage foams wet, I do recommend that you let them dry as uh, water can kill your foams over time. Uh, it just breaks them down a lot faster. I do run vented tires to let my tires work a little more. The bumper's getting into this wall. We're, we're gonna have to hit this on more of an angle. So. But even in the wet, these tires are giving lots of great traction and conforming very well to the rocks. I'm really liking the dual stage foams. I, I absolutely would recommend them. They work well. And the inner stage is, is bigger than like Crawler Innovations is. So you get a lot more side roll biting than you do with other foams. Uh, probably a little more than Proline even, but the inner stage is probably a little softer than Proline's is, in my opinion. That's not scientific, that's just me squeezing the foam, right? Oh, we had it and it fell off. Man, that was a good bump too. You get the belly clear of the rock. That was it, just didn't, just didn't stick up top. Okay, I think, I think that's where we want to send it. Very vertical climb here. I just ran this with the VRD. You guys are gonna have to check out that video, but uh, the VRD crawled this. It, it just absolutely walked it like it wasn't even there. So be sure to check out the VRD video. Okay, we'll just, don't, not, come on, come on, come on. There we go, all right. What'd you think of that one, Sydney? Say, I just dropped my tennis ball up here and then it rolled down the hill and off the cliff. So she's, she's a sad dog now. Sad puppy. Happy dog when you pet her. Now I might be speaking a little bit out of my wheelhouse here as I'm not like an electronics expert, but the factory controller with this motor in ESC, you can really hear the steps in the throttle. There's like, I, th I think they refer to it as like 12 bit and 32 bit like communication. I don't know the exact terminology there, but basically it breaks down your throttle into like 12 different positions. And as I slowly pull the trigger in, it's not a smooth linear graph. It goes bop, 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 like that. And I can really hear it with this motor and ESC combo. So I think it's, I think it's just the affordable controller with this and the receiver. I won't call it cheap because you can adjust things. I, I like the controller, but I do notice the, the throttle stepping, the, the low bit rate controller, I guess. I, I don't know if that's the exact terminology, but I, I hear it a lot. And it, it's kind of funny because like, if you're just cruising along walking, your truck is, it's like a keyboard. It just, you hit the next key of the motor. It's Do you guys want me to keep making samples of the sounds that we're hearing? Should I just, just do do do? Do you want me to keep doing that? So let's talk about these RTR tires. These are the Falcon Wild Peaks in 4.65 from Vanquish. And it is in their red compound on their RTR truck. They sell these as an aftermarket part. And these are very high traction, very sticky tires. And for an RTR, arguably could be the highest traction tire on an RTR. So they do well, but over again. But because they are such a soft compound out here on these really abrasive sandstone rocks, like these rocks loved, it's just sandpaper. So as you spin tires, it chews the rubber up. And speaking of that, 
these tires are wearing very quickly, significantly faster than other brands of tires. Okay, we're gonna take a bypass on this one. Sydney climbed down and got the tennis ball back. She's gonna drop it here in a second and then it's gonna roll to the bottom of the cliff again. But these tires are a very thin carcass so they conform really well. They want to wrap around rocks. They get high traction. I just don't think these are gonna have a long lifespan. Now for most people that crawl, you know, once every couple weeks, won't be an issue. Eventually you'll find a different style tire that you'd probably wanna to change to anyway. Or not, you can just get these tires again direct from Vanquish. They are good and they perform well but they wear quickly, at least on my terrain they do. All right, let's just, let's keep going. I'm standing down here, I can play catcher if I need to. There it is. Could be, has been, before. Oh, hold the GoPro up so we can see what's going on. I can't see, but you guys can see. There it is. Pull front end. Okay, let's climb up there and get a better view. Now we'll say there's about a 30 foot drop behind the truck. So uh, working these ledges, gonna be a little more cautious than normal. But I've had trucks go off cliffs before and I stand behind the idea of let the truck fall, don't go after the truck. Like, don't hurt yourself for an RC car, guys. Usually, they're in remarkably good shape, you know? Might cost you maybe a hundred bucks in parts, but I can tell you what, a hundred bucks is a lot cheaper than a hospital bill. Woo! There we go. Got that chassis to finally break free and it kind of snapped downhill. Yeah, that's where we wanted to be. Lovely, lovely climb. Overdrive pulling the front end right around. Perfect, made it look good. So as far as the tires go, I enjoy them. I will run them, clearly, but I do have some Proline scale tires that I would like to try on this truck. Um, they just released that 4.75 tall Toyo. And uh, I would like to see that on this truck. I think it would look fantastic. So I ordered some Vanquish SCX-102 knuckles, the aluminum knuckles. I got them in an anodized finish as you have to get because all of their knuckles are anodized. But I chose a color. In the next video you guys will see the color. Or follow my Instagram at West Desert Wheeler. You'll probably see them on there before the next video. Instagram is more real-time. Videos have a little bit of a backlog. But eventually you, see, you end up seeing the same builds but you get different content on each. I post wildly different stuff on each one. So if you want more RC content, find my Instagram. I don't do much on Facebook, so, uh, you know, I don't push that at all. Just don't care for the platform. But this Ford Ice, like I mentioned, I went to Colorado, took it with me, and did not regret it. It was a really good choice. It was fun to just go out and trail with. It's not the most capable truck I own, but it's capable enough and a lot of fun to take out on the trails, no doubt. Isn't that right, Sydney? I do think the looks of this truck are growing on me. I'm enjoying it. So the biggest changes, like I say, dual stage foams, Hobbywing Axe brushless system. I'd probably prefer Fusion Pro, but I had a spare axe, so that worked out. And there are other trucks that uh, the Pro is a little better choice for. This guy has some room for an extra ESC, so. And they are more powerful systems. They have a higher amp rating on the ESC. Probably a better internal BEC if I were to guess. I have to ask Hobbywing that question. Dude, this is a big drop with high consequences. We're gonna be all right. I've never run this line. I was just walking along over on the edge of risk there. This is a great view of risk. 
So this is the trail. That's where I always talk about tr no truck has fallen off. Big cliff. Excuse me, could you not pant in my ear? She brought us a little, little gift. Go have fun. But I noticed this little rock formation and uh, from where I could see it looked pretty good and it might be a buggy line, but a line nonetheless. We're gonna try it out with the four dice. Now is it four dice or is it Ford ice? This is a very important question. You guys need to let me know down in the comments below. I'm gonna try and float the front end in there. It's pretty well bound up. This tire's getting plenty of traction. Luckily that bumper and bedsides doesn't want to let you flip over backwards. Well, that was a cool little pirouette into the line. Look at that rear tire wrap up. Lots of traction there. But getting back to the fact that uh, these tires have a pretty thin carcass and they're a very soft compound. Uh-oh. Raw 500 doesn't have as much torque, but it's very fast and it's a great, it's a great servo choice for a Ford Ice. Like, if you were to say pick servo for a Ford Ice, I'd probably have to say Raw 500. It's just got the right amount of torque. There's a bee messing with Sydney. Get it. I'm gonna go kill this bee. <laughs> All right, I think we got the bee to leave us alone. He's a, he's a spazzy little guy, man. Hard to get, hard to get a hold of. I think there's a nest nearby and they're not happy that we're over here crawling. The bees want to keep the good lines for themselves, man. This may be a rear steer only line. There's a big ledge. Oh, Sydney's, Sydney's sad. He wants pets. There's a big ledge on the driver front. Please move and stop panting in my face. Sydney, go on. So we got to keep it real sideways. but not that sideways. Yeah, I think it could be done drag axle. It's gonna take some work. Yeah, that's where that ax makes a difference over the Fusion Pro. It's able to push through binds harder. The motor and ESC don't give up as easy as the Fusion Pro does which is a good safety feature. It stops you from breaking parts. But with the rock solid BFD with machined overdrive gears and straight axles, I'm really not afraid of breaking parts here. I'm afraid of falling off that cliff, but the truck itself, I'm not too worried about. Man, Vanquish, since coming out with the Phoenix, and like doing more mass production trucks, I think they've really been coming out with great releases. They've been doing killer over there. I'm a big fan of the Vanquish product lineup right now. All right, come on, and get the rear through. It's gonna hit that wall. Yeah, this is a this is a technical one. This is good. It's gonna want to. I need to drop the front in. So that that takes pressure off the rear. Just a little bit. That's a better line. I like to keep it balanced. Yeah. May not be the Ford Ice line. That's all right. We're finding new stuff anyway. But uh, we will be back for this one. Maybe we can pull it up and out of this wall. There's a big ledge, but there's this flat spot down here by my foot. Maybe we can get the front end to hook onto that with all the overdrive. Pull it up and out. Just the right wheelbase almost. Come on. Get it, Fordyce. Look at this like little happy Jeep face. All right. 
Found a new one. That looks fun though. So this is the progression of the original trail. I've since changed it and I think included more very fun obstacles, but it's been so long since I've run these ones that uh, always a good time to go back and try them again. I don't remember exactly what I did here. I don't think I ever drove on this, but we're about to. I did just get run off by another damn bee. Like it just comes and starts buzzing around me and he's, they're just not happy that I'm here right now. Clearly not fans of open OHV. There, there we go. All right. gets another one done. Oh. Let's turn right here. There it is. Timing is everything on these trucks. Nice. About sick of these damn bees today, man. I hate getting stung by bees. That's just the worst. But we have made it to the point where it now joins into where my new version of the trail intersects with the original. As I was originally driving back up this trail, I saw this crack and I was like, oh, that looks fun. Well, that's the crack that I climb out of the new one. And then from the crack is the old classic ridge right here where the truck gets up to like eye level and it's just fantastic to watch crawl works great on videos trucks just in your face watch the tires grab for traction watch the suspension articulate drag the belly across see the overdrive work Luckily that VFD skid has that long forward portion. There it is. That ended up on a bad line, but we recovered. We got her out of it. This line usually involves a bump. And I think with this wheelbase and this clearance, we will need a bump or you fall off the cliff to death. So let's try one more time on this angle. It wasn't looking bad. She got pushed a little bit offline. Stayed on it, there it was, didn't need a bump. Nice. Not many vehicles have actually crawled that. Ford Ice is very capable. Its body style kind of dictates you know, it can't fit in certain places. It's not a buggy. But the VS410 chassis is very robust, very strong. The parts are good. And it is a high-performing truck still. This is like elite trail truck. This is a optional line, normally a climb. I've actually never tried to drop this. You can see those inserts working right there to stop the side hill roll. Just the very bottom edge of the tread shifts over just a little more, but the whole sidewall is pretty well supported and doesn't roll over. So those are those stance dual stage foams putting in work. I knew this truck on the climb would end up just smashed on sliders. There we go. First truck to drive down it that I know of. And I would say pretty gracefully, like she held her, she held herself together there. Just about rolled on the bottom, but again, four dice, getting it done. The overdrive really makes a big difference in these trucks. And this one's got enough to make a significant 
and noticeable difference, you know. Once you get up above 20%, you really start to see and notice the overdrive working. I'll climb. That bottom rock's in a good spot, actually. Should crawl that. Unfortunately, these rocks will not stay in one spot. So you kind of get one shot. A little bigger rock helps for sure. This has always been a full throttle bump to get them to work. You gotta launch the belly up and across the uh, ledge there. Give it enough momentum to get enough weight on the front axle to actually pull the rears across. So it takes a lot to get it there. Wrong angle, my rear rock has moved. This truck's very stable and it's got really minimal amounts of weight in it. It's just got some brass rings in the front wheels. And, oh, I guess we can talk about the 10-2 uh, the knuckles that I ordered. I feel like I've been all over the map on this video. 10-2 uh, knuckles are going on this truck so that I can use the wheels and tires that are currently on my three-link Capra, which are some Spec RC 1.9 wheels, and they have 2.2 stainless Vanquish rotor weights inside them in the fronts. So it's it's all rotational, which I usually don't like suggest, but in certain situations, you know, it, it's a good amount of weight. There it was. Told you, you had to get enough belly up and over to pull the rear up. But those two two weights should add a noticeable amount more front weight to this truck. They already have those Proline wheels mounted to them. I've already got squid inserts in them. So, just gonna change it up, try some different tires, some different wheels, some different inserts. And then I'm sure these KMCs and the Wild Peaks and the Stance Foams will find their way onto something else, whether temporary or permanent. Maybe they'll end up back on the Ford Ice. I don't know. It's all good. I like to swap stuff around and have some fun with it, try different things out. But that's going to end this uh, pretty wild trail ride we had today, guys. Vanquish Ford Ice coming out of the end pretty well unscathed. Maybe a few new scratches, a couple more memories. But overall, fantastic truck. I really enjoy driving this thing. Well, that's going to end it for our trail run today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. I hope you had a good time. Be sure to drop a comment down below what you think of the Vanquish Ford Ice. For the RTR, it's definitely highly recommended for me. I have a lot of fun driving it. Like, it's not my highest performer. It's not the craziest line killer. It's just fun. It's very well capable enough to try the difficult lines that I like to put it on. And uh, sometimes it'll surprise you, which is the fun part, is when it's like, oh, damn, it actually pulled that off. So Ford Ice, big thumbs up in my book. I really enjoy it. You know, slowly changing it up here and there. Maybe in the future we'll go even crazier. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. Be sure to hit the affiliate links down below. That's how you can support me here on the channel. Pick up a West Desert Wheeler shirt. That's, uh, it's, it's getting cold. It's time for some hoodies. Be sure to grab one. We'll see you guys in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.